Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial, and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. If you are new to the channel and you're trying to get the best out of it, I would like to make a few recommendations to make it easy for you. Please visit the Russia and China playlist. You can find that on my dashboard. So simply go to, I think, the head of the channel where it says videos, um, channels, display, community, list. If you subscribe to the Master's Voice, you will be able to have access to the many written words and encouragements and revelations that the Lord gives me that I do not put on the blog because this is the Lord's blog and the prophecies on the blog are his formal proclamations. But on the community page, I occasionally share things that the Lord reveals to me, just personally insights and other revelations that I hope those of you who have access to the community page find helpful. This is the second video that the Lord instructed me to make today, and I will simply call it Ezekiel 9, the mercy of God. Yes, I will call it Ezekiel 9, the mercy of God. That is a good name considering what he was sharing about it. Yes, I hadn't finished. So you can subscribe and then you'll be able to have access to the community page. Please visit the Russia and China playlist if you are new. It's a very important playlist to understand what the Lord says, what things will be in the United States of America. The point of these prophecies are directed to America, but the I think the kernel in most of these things can be used by Christians all around the world. I'm saying to you that if you are believer in, a believer in these final times, do not allow anyone to sell you pewter or to sell you nickel or to sell you bronze and tell you that it is gold and silver. Hold fast to the truth of the word of God. Stop going to the synagogues that are not giving you the full counsel of God. Stop going to places where your sin is tolerated because I'm telling you there is a very harsh penalty for sin. It will be judgment not only to the U.S., it will be international judgment. We are watching in our times, many with shock who thought they would never see this in their lifetime. We are watching the rise of the beast system. The beast system is the brainchild of Satan. This is the rise of an alternate kingdom that will offer alternate solutions to those who want to enter God's kingdom. This kingdom will tell people that there's no need to be fully human, that it is better to upgrade your humanity so that you can be able to upload yourself to the cloud as a consciousness and then download yourself into a new body. And by this process, enjoy eternal life. I've spoken of many of the shocking revelations that the Lord has given me concerning the beast system. But before that beast system comes, the mightiest nation is going to go through a horrible facelift to prepare her as the bride of the beast. So Mystery Babylon is going to have a makeover that is going to shock and terrify the people who live in the country that we know as America. And unless these people are warned and told that they have a choice, to strengthen themselves in the Lord, to make sure that they check the foundations of what they call faith. Is it resting on the true scripture or is it resting on this cartoon version of Christianity that has fast become the norm? Here in America, you can't teach the word of God anymore. You can't confront sin anymore. You can't say what is right and what is wrong anymore. You have to have 10,000 demonstrations and 10,000 illustrations and props and hype. And the funny thing is God was asking me as I was on my way back, from service today. Celestial, why is it that my people have to be entertained in order to be interested in me? Think about it. The choirs, the pastors, the media team, the little smoke machine, the crazy nightclub lights. Why is all of this necessary to sell the Bible? Why does the Bible need to be sold in the first place? Why is the Bible not interesting for who is in it? and what it teaches? Why does it always need to be hyped up so that the interest of people can be kept? Do we not know that the only people who need a lot of energy and stuff like that are small children? 
Do you know how tiring it is? I'm speaking to the single people because all the parents out there are clapping. Do you know how tiring it is to keep a child's attention? They can't focus for five minutes. That's because their children, their brains haven't grown in. They constantly need rubber duckies and tricks and, and little, little sounds to keep their interest. Why is it that in the house of God, if there's not three special songs and a tap dance number and mime or those weird women with the twirly sticks jumping around, we can't focus on the word of God. Do you know how much more interesting and how much more time there would be for a good sermon if those things were pared down or in some cases, cast out of the sanctuary altogether. And it was simply about worship music that focuses on Jesus, doesn't focus on my heart was breaking and I was kind of lost, but then you came seeking me and you found me. It's always about the fact that he found us, but then there's never anything in the second, third or 55th verse that says, and after he found me, I put on the full armor of God. I opened the scripture and I began to find out what my responsibility is concerning sin. I began to say that he said that the man who looks into the perfect law of liberty and then goes away but does not do it, meaning does not keep my way, is like a man who looks into the mirror and then walks away and forget what his face looks like. I need to find out more about honoring my elders and honoring my parents. I need to find out more about how I can be useful to my neighbor that I can see has five children and I'm single and I have 12 Xboxes and I'm ordering the brand new one from Sony now, but she looks hungry and those children look like they need new shoes, but it's not really my concern. I'm waiting to have a prophetic dream and then I'll get involved. I'm waiting for songs like those myself. Let us go to the scripture. Ezekiel 9, the title of this message is The Mercy of God. Then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice. This is God calling out in the hearing of Ezekiel, who he has been showing the systematic sin that has come among God's people. So chapter nine is a continuation of God simply saying that disaster after disaster will come upon these people because they are constantly seeking false visions from the prophets. But he said that he will take the true law out of the mouth of the priests and the prophets and that they would prophesy lies to the people. And the reason God said he would do that is so the people can be destroyed. You see, when a lie is prophesied into your belly, you will be destroyed because you put all your faith in something that's not true. And I know that this nation found out the hard way in 2020, lie upon lie, and yet there was no manifestation of the lie. And people just doubled down and said, no, but, but you know, um, um, any minute now it will turn. And God was just watching and he is still watching. The Lord said to Ezekiel with a loud voice, let those who have charge over the city now come near and each of them bring a deadly weapon in his hand. I'm paraphrasing. And suddenly six, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces the north, each of them carrying a battle ax in his hand. And one of them was wearing a linen garment and he carried the inkhorn of a rider by his side. And they all filed in and they stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of God, the glory of the God of Israel had risen up from the cherub where it had rested and moved to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man who was clothed with linen, who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, go through the midst of this city, go all through Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of all the men who are crying and sighing over all the abominations that are done in this city. To the others, he said in my hearing, this is God speaking to Ezekiel or speaking in Ezekiel's presence, go after this one with the inkhorn and kill. Do not let your eyes spare anyone and do not have any pity. Utterly cut down the old and the young men, cut down the maidens and cut down the little children and the women, but do not come near anyone who has my mark and start at the sanctuary. So they started with the elders who were standing in front of the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the buildings with the dead, go out. And the men went out and they killed in the city. So it was while they were killing them, 
that I was standing alone and I fell on my face and I cried out, oh Lord God, will you destroy the entire remnant of Israel by pouring out this great fury upon Jerusalem? And he said to me, the iniquity of Israel and Judah is too great and the land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of perversion. And this is what they say to each other. God isn't even in this country. He doesn't see anything. And as for me also, my eye will not spare them, nor will I have any pity on them, but I will repay all their deeds upon their own heads. At that very moment, the man who had the inkhorn came back and reported, I have done as you commanded me. So this is a very grave piece of scripture and I believe the Lord gave it to me three years ago. And he was saying that in addition to Ezekiel chapter 33, which I strongly have recommended that people read along with Jeremiah chapter 50, Jeremiah chapter 51, Jeremiah chapter 23, I think it's chapter 23 that talks a lot about false prophets. This passage of scripture will form part of a cash. So a cash just means a bundle or a lump of. A bundle and a lump of scripture along with Revelation 16, 17, and 18, from which the Lord will judge the nation of America. Ezekiel 9 is saying that God made a proclamation, and this proclamation was for judgment. And in this chapter, unlike the first video where I was showing the process of how the Lord will first discern that a nation is sinful or a person is sinful and then watch that person and tolerate the sin. God is not tolerating the sin because he enjoys it. God tolerates sin because he know that as the Bible says in Psalm 32, if you were to regard iniquity, O Lord, who could stand? That means that if God was to react for every single sin, there would be no people on this planet only the ducks and the giraffe would be here happy and free without any of any of us around. So Psalm 32 says that if God was to be reactive to every sin, man could not exist before him. And this is because man is inherently sinful. When we do good, we are not doing good because we are good. We are doing good out of the operation of the goodness of God's spirit in us. God's spirit is in us, even in people who are not born again. The spirit of God is in everyone because all living people have received of his precious breath to become a living being. But when you become born, again, that spirit becomes activated. You become a new creation. You become a new person. The old is cast away and the new has come. And now like a person who's gotten a new house, you are supposed to fill it with God's favorite things, not your favorite things. The life that we have on this planet is to be pleasing to the father, to live out the purpose for which he has made us. So if God has made you to have a love of small children, liking watching them grow up, watching their development, then all Obviously, you're going to end up in pre-K, you're going to end up in the lower grades, but if you are better at giving information, you might be a newscaster, you might be a teacher somewhere, you might be an author of books. There are many different things that God has called us to. The fact is that we are created to bring God glory and how God is glorified is not only when we fully maximize potential, but also when we walk in the righteous and holy ways that he has prepared for us in his truth. And he has sent his son to redeem us from the snare of sin. And he has sent his spirit to live within us, guiding us as a living flame, burning inside always to tell us this is righteous and holy before the Lord. Stay away from this for it will destroy your temple. But it comes a place where God moves past tolerating sin. Tolerance of sin will only go on for a while. This is why many people in the back sliding life, it gets really sweet in the mouth because they think I will always be like this. And then unfortunately, there's just that one day, that one day where the car goes off the road and then we don't get many people crawling out of the wreck. And when these things happen, it is not because God is evil or wicked. It is because everything comes to its natural conclusion. Just as a baby is born, grows up, lives a life, and eventually passes away, 
Every single process comes to its conclusion. So when God is through tolerating sin, God will send voices to make a proclamation. God sent Jonah to Nineveh to make a proclamation. God sent Daniel to explain to King Nebuchadnezzar about the proclamation that he saw that the watchers made in his dream. When they said, this man is too arrogant and this man is too much and heaven now brings a proclamation against you, chop down the tree. The dream that he has that would explain to him was the proclamation. He continued living the same way. So that means that grace has come to Nebuchadnezzar. Here is the meaning of your dream. Stop sinning. But he continues to, getting even more prideful and rebellious until one day his dream came true. When his dream came true, that is what I explained in the first video, and that is called making the cup full. So God was watching Nebuchadnezzar not change after having this clear dream, after having an excellent advisor like Daniel, not only tell him the meaning of the dream, but tell him what to change. You see, you will know the fruit of a true spiritual leader when they can not only rightly interpret scripture for you, but give you the remedy against destruction. The remedy against destruction is just not telling you, oh, God is so sweet and God is love and love and love and God would never hurt you. Those are lies. The remedy against destruction is to understand what causes destruction in the first first place and then guard against it. See, people know how to guard their phones with passwords and they know how to guard their bank accounts by having little apps and alerts. They know how to guard their homes with ring doorbells and other security systems, but guarding the eternal soul, not so much, not so much. People just let their souls fly in the wind and think that their souls are safe because God would never, that could not be further from the truth. God makes a proclamation and then he moves to judgment and he says, I need six men who are watching over this city to come near and bring your weapons with you. And so these six men are just indicative of the spiritual beings that God has watching over Jerusalem at that time. So there are always spiritual stewards, most of them angels, but some of them even higher that God has watching over the entire earth. And so these six were told, you in charge of Jerusalem, come and bring weapons. So this is a picture that judgment has been determined by the Lord and he is ready to carry it out. One of the men that was called had a marker. And this is the reason that this message is titled Ezekiel 9, the mercy of God. This man carried an inkhorn and the instruction that God gave this man was very different from what he gave the other five. In fact, he let the man with the inkhorn go first. He told him, go throughout the entire city, the entire thing, and mark the forehead of every person that you find crying, weeping, interceding, and crying out to me about the wicked things that are done in this city. So that man was allowed to go first. You might say that the writer with the inkhorn is me sitting here saying that God has determined just judgment against the nation. Therefore, it is time to turn away from sin back to God. It is time to turn away from the pursuit of selfish interests back to God. Not saying that living out the ordinary life is selfish, but if God is not the foremost personage in your life, if anything is sitting in the place that belongs to Yah, then your life is already given over to idolatry, whether it's idolatry of your job, the promotion you're working, working towards the woman that you're trying to get to marry you, the man that you're hoping will marry you, or the house that you're hoping to close on with your spouse or by yourself or with your sister, whatever it is, if you have any goals, interests, or pursuits that consume the time within you that belongs to the heavenly father, then you're in idolatry or you're in danger of falling into idolatry and your life is warped. It is not at center. And this is the time to begin fixing the things that are twisted and broken and until they're standing at a perfect alignment with the spirit of God. God actually wants us to live very beautiful and productive lives in tandem and relationship with him. But if that alignment is not there, if it is crooked or twisted, this is the time during proclamation to check the foundations and make ready to stand before the Lord one day. So God lets 
His mercy go out first. His mercy is in warning. His mercy is in revealing. His mercy is in telling the truth. But eventually, after that, he tells the other men, follow him. If you don't see the mark on someone, slay that person. Don't come back and tell me you didn't slay someone because they were an old person. Don't come back and tell me you didn't slay someone because it was a little child. Don't come back and tell me you didn't do it because she was a young girl, a maiden, and you didn't feel it was right. Don't come back and tell me that you spared the women because it's traditional to spare the women and children. Young, old, nursing infant, small child, male and female, if they do not have the mark of my mercy upon them, which means that this is a person in whose heart burns love for me, understanding of me desire for my word. You do not have to be a Bible guru, but if you have a Bible and you're basically using it as a table ornament, you are in danger of falling into the hands of the second five and not the merciful one. He tells them, go out and don't make any distinctions. The only distinction you will make is my mark or no mark. And in in layman's terms, I can put it this way. If God does not judge a person righteous, your mouth will never make you righteous. There are people out there who are claiming Christianity and you know that it is a bald faced lie. If your life was held up before God's standard, it would literally burst into flames before his eyes. It does not match up with what his word says. This is different from struggling in your faith. People can struggle in their faith and God knows who is striving towards the mark. That is why Paul says, I strive toward the mark. This is why Paul says in Romans chapter seven, that man comes encased in a body that is predisposed to sin, but who will save us from this body of sin? And he's not asking a facetious question. He's asking, how am I actually going to go through this life where it seems that I'm constantly messing things up with God, where it seems that I can't keep all these laws. The Bible and the word of God is not about law keeping. It is about a heart that is first righteous because the mouth has confessed that there is a God. Hebrews eleven six. He who comes to God must first believe that he is. So this disqualifies all the athe all the atheists. This disqualifies people who are currently in false religions. And if you want to become offended and say, well, I cannot follow a God who says that he's the only way. And what about all the people in the other religions? I urge you not to worry about the people in the other religions because God has sent people to them. God will reveal himself to these people so greatly. And as I have seen in what I call the revolving door prophecy, these people will flood into the church in the end times. They will cast away their idols. This is in print on the master's voice where the Lord says that idols will fall. There's a three part message saying that idols will fall. Part one, part two, and part three. God will release such waves of grace to the other religions and they will see him in signs and wonders as they have never seen him before. God is going to send true and trusted servants that he can rely on to speak to and teach those people. And they will come into the kingdom in droves. But the reason it's called a revolving door prophecy is because I saw in those days that many grew tired because nobody came to fetch them and carry them away to rapture world. It is up to you if you will be offended in hearing these things. As for me, my part is to speak the word without apology and speak it. I will. I saw that many in the church became disheartened and they cursed God and they became angry because life as a persecuted Christian was not fun. It was not easy. Just as the Bible says in Matthew 24, that they will persecute you and some of you will be put into jail for my sake. Even in Revelations, I think it's two or three, it says that, that some of you will be put in prison for 10 days. Please don't think that it actually means 10 consecutive days. It is actually speaking about a very long passage of time. And he says, some of you will even be put to death for my sake. The scripture says, you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. The life that is further ahead for those who confess Christ is not going to be the easiest. But you see the thing about the religions that do not have Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior now is that they are taught 
the fundamentals of faith in a way that Christianity has fallen away from and totally forgotten. They are taught disciplines in how to pray and a level of devoutness that Christianity by and large lacks today. These people are used to sacrifice for their gods and their deities that they believe in. They are used to petitioning these gods for hours. So can you imagine the spark of passion and fire that is going to ignite in the heart of someone who is perhaps a Hindu or is a Baha'i or is in Islam. When that person prays and God begins to manifest himself to that person with power, can you imagine the excitement? Praying to a God who is not your deity, but your father who will answer you and you will see his power in your life for real in a way that you have probably never experienced before. Such people will cling to God with a fewer, and trust me, they will not be worrying about those who have been saved for 15 years or 20 years who are now angry and upset because the rapture just isn't happening. Every single Shemitah, you know, we wait for this guy and he just doesn't show up. Those people will be like people in the desert who have found fresh water and they will not be offended at God <laughs> for your sake or my sake. They will be like people in the book of Matthew where it says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who found a treasured pearl in the field. He found a treasure in the field and he took all his life savings and he went and purchased that field. Imagine a man who finds something so precious that he immediately snaps it up. He can't even bear the thought of someone else owning this field. He doesn't even care if there's more treasure in the field. He just knows that for the sake of the treasure he found, he has to have it. That is how hungry people will be for God. But other people are just hungry for rest. And when that rest doesn't show up at the next Passover or the next special feast, Many in the church are going to be weakened and tired and they will just peel away from Jesus like old wallpaper and be offended for his sake, just as he said to John when John was offended and said, but are you really the Christ or not? Don't worry about other people's salvation. God has a plan for their salvation. The Bible says you then, you, pointing at me and at whoever is watching, you then work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And trust me, when the Antichrist rises and the beast system kicks off, there will be plenty of fear and trembling to go around. So let us strengthen ourselves in the Lord, gird ourselves up at the waist and get ready to go through this thing whenever it begins. The Lord says, mark only those righteous with my mark, but on everyone else utterly slay. And then he says, defile the temple and let their bodies lie in there. And this has a double meaning. It's not only talking about the persecution and the killing of Christians in martyrdom that will come in the end days, but he says, let the temple be defiled and let their dead bodies lie there. And many churches are that burnt out church from the book of Revelation chapter two or three. I think it's the Laodicean church that just says you are lukewarm and you're good for nothing. You actually have no use and so I will spit you, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Many churches are dead churches. The pastor is dead, the worship is dead, the word is dead, and the people sitting there in that dead environment themselves are dead. They have no life in themselves and no root. And so when persecution comes from the pastor on down to the kiddies in Bible study, everyone will be scattered and blown away like chaff because they won't have the ability to withstand the evil iron trampling feet of the beast. So when you're in a dead church, you have a dead faith. A dead faith is different from going through a storm or a struggle, even a hard season in your life. When you have a dead faith, you've just been standing in the same place since you were born again in 1982 and nothing is coming out of you, like a stump in the ground that can't even get those little green shoots going again. It is time to say, Jesus, I need to be brought back to life. 
There is nothing wrong with rededicating your faith. See, that's the thing. People are ready to renew their car license. They're ready to renew their lease. Everything else in life, they're ready to renew. But then we do not think that our relationship with the Heavenly Father needs rededication, needs pruning, needs gardening, needs care. And we think that we can just come to Jesus in 2005, come to Jesus in 2015, and just stay the same, once saved, always saved. That is such error. Names can be blotted out from the book of life. Names can be blotted out from the book of life. Having your name blotted out from the book of life is like having your name on a fancy invitation and being on the guest list and then getting there and having the guy at the door go, we don't have you here. That means that even if you were on the list, when the final list was edited in the computer and printed up so that the entry process can be handled smoothly, no one is expecting you. So Ezekiel intercedes as the prophet of the Lord, as the messenger that God has brought close to see that this killing will happen. He cries out, he falls down before the Lord and he says, Lord, will you actually destroy even the remnant? The Lord will not destroy his remnant here in America or anywhere else. Although this is not the prevalent theme in the master's voice, and it is not the prevalent theme, not because I celestial am holding it back. It is not the prevalent theme because God expects his people to know that he will protect them, that he will keep them. And so it is only very rarely as God is speaking about the judgments of the nations that he says, and to my people. But for the most part, he doesn't bring it up because God knows that the truly righteous who are walking with him, we, we have like a tag. We have a tag in us. That tag is the power and the affirmation of the Holy Spirit in us that we are someone's. I never go anywhere without the full knowledge that I'm not just celestial on the street, on the train, on the bus. When I go out, it is always in me at a conscious level that I belong to someone. I have rights on this planet. I have rights in the spiritual realm. I have the right not to just be randomly attacked by demons. I have the right not to just go through sleep paralysis, which is just demons sitting on your chest and trying to attack and afflict you in the middle of the night. And then WebMD is telling you, oh, it happens. They tell you that it happens, but they cannot tell you why it happens. That is because we inhabit a realm that is meshed with the spiritual realm. If anyone thinks that this life is just a natural life, I just walk around and go to the store and get my, pay my bills and go to my job and mind my business. This life is meshed with the supernatural. And the proof of it is in how we are made body, soul, and spirit. So we have one part of us. We are three parts. One part of us is visible and two parts of us are not visible. And yet they are real and they exist because when a man dies, soul and spirit exit. And all we see is the shell, the house that he used to live in. So this is proof positive that this life is not only lived by what is visible, but there is tons of invisible. So as we walk around, the identity of who we are in Jesus Christ is essential to successful living as a Christian. And righteousness, God will not ignore. Righteousness, God will not fail to feed when the economy tanks. God will not fail to provide for those who stood for what they believed in and did not allow themselves to be harmed by the harm. God will be faithful to his people. He says, when I'm talking, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not go after the stranger. So God is expecting the righteous to know that as long as they keep his will, the mark of the inkhorn will be put upon their foreheads and they will be kept safe in him. So as Ezekiel is crying out and interceding and saying, God, will you even destroy the remnant? God simply says to him that the wickedness of this place is too great. And the land is soaked with blood. It is full of bloodshed. And this city itself is a perverse one. Perversion simply means taking something for which it was intended and using it for something that it was not intended for. You take a fork and then you use it to stab someone in the eye. No one in the history of fork making made forks for that. 
but that is what people will use them for in a fit of anger or rage or something. And the Lord is simply saying that the perversion of the land and the bloodshed of the land is too great. And on top of that, they're very arrogant with it. And they say that I don't see, they do it as if I'm blind. And he said for that, I will prove to them what my eye is for. My eye will not spare them and I will have no pity, but I will repay them for all their wicked deeds on their own head. There are many people who wonder if judgment of God is just going to rage through the nations and destroy the righteous with the wicked. No, it will not. But the Lord has said, especially in the United States, that the righteous will be as those who are saved from fire. Now, if you've seen fire ravage a building, have you ever seen anyone that is able to make it out with the flat screen and their Xbox and all their clothes and the laptop? No, you grab your children. Maybe if you can, you grab your passports and whatever money you might have at home and you try to make it out with your life. When a land is exceedingly wicked, when the perversion and the bloodshed is exceedingly great, then you're not, you're, you're not expecting a Nineveh ending. You can only expect a, Babylon, a Babylonian captivity ending. And the mercy that God shows in these extreme situations is that he grants people their lives. He grants people the lives of their children, but there won't be that much else. He will give you the sustenance that you need. He will give us the food, the water, the spiritual shielding that we need, but you can't be in, in such times, living in such times where people are coming on Google and telling you that they're about to turn human beings into cyborgs and put uploads in their heads, you're watching the words of Daniel the prophet come to life. Such as when he said he will think to change times and laws. Nothing legally is the same as it was 40, 24 months ago. So why is our expectation so vastly different from the reality that our eyes are seeing and our bodies are experiencing? It definitely is pointing to some form of deception. So the mercy of God will precede the judgment of God. And the mercy of God may not look like what you think. The mercy of God might look like getting you out of a certain state that you're living in, a certain country that you're living in, and taking you back to another country or another state that is better for you. There is a new prophecy on the blog. Um, it's a week old. It's called Ancestry. And in that prophecy, the Lord was revealing to me that because it is the ends of times, he's actually numbering men of the nations according to their birth. And what he shared with me is that people will begin to feel this inexplicable desire to go back to the country that they were born in. So you, you were six years old when your parents emigrated to another country. You've lived in the UK your whole life. You've lived somewhere else your whole life. And you will suddenly feel this uncontrollable urge to go back to where you were born or where your father comes from. For your nation's origin definitely follows the dad. So you will go back to Nigeria if that is where your father is from. Or you will go back to somewhere else if that is where your father is from. Even if you don't have family there, you will feel this urge, this push to go back there. And all of this is because the Lord is ordering the earth before his coming. And so this is the word of the Lord that his eye will not have pity, but he will repay the deeds of the evildoers upon their own heads. And the prophecy ends when the man said, the one who had the marker to mark the foreheads of the righteous, he came back and he said, I have done what you commanded me. And when the Lord gave me this word, I was in the middle of singing at church and he gave me, he said, celestial Ezekiel nine and verse 11. And when I opened it, I didn't even know that it had a verse 11. And it says, he reported back to him and he said, I have done what you commanded me. And that is what I'm doing here on the master's voice. Thank you for being with me. I'm celestial. Thank you for tuning into the channel. Please like the videos. I would even appreciate it if you've actually watched a video, please just don't go and randomly like the videos. But if you've watched a video and you didn't drop a like and you have time, it would be good if you drop a like because it helps these videos to go up in the algorithm so that others can see this. Am I doing this so that this channel has followers? No, I strongly urge you that you are not coming to the master's voice to follow me. I am a Christian who is following Jesus. You are watching someone live out her calling, live out her purpose and live out the direct 
instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ to her. And I am doing that so that when the Lord asks me, what have you done in the earth? I can say, I have done as you commanded me. So in a nation of at least, I think we're almost 340 million here. This is definitely not reaching as many ears as it needs to. And remember what I said in the previous video, that when proclamation goes out, the prophecy becomes active. So it becomes like a switch that has gone from on to from off to on, it becomes active and it will fulfill itself in the timing God has given it, regardless of if someone has seen the prophecy or not, regardless of anyone, if anyone even knows that these things that the Lord is saying will come in our future times will happen or not. Proclamation will turn into fulfillment, whether people know or not. And for my part, I would pray and hope that more people would know because once you know, you have a choice to make. I know when the Lord came to me and began to reveal these things, my choice was clear. It was, yes, Lord, your servant hears. And so like the videos and um, share if you can, you can find everything about the work that I'm doing for the Lord, including where the blog is in the description box below. And until I see you again, we will continue with the supernatural series, the aliens, the zombies, reanime, um, the undead. We will continue. There are still many dreams to get through on that topic. So I will be there for a while. God bless you and goodbye.